Listen, life is so short that you cannot afford to live based on experiments. Experiment. You have to live based on discernment. The decision you take today determines the outcome of your life tomorrow. If you are trying to live based on experiments or experiences, you are finished. You know why? The devil is more experienced than you. And if you claim you are a believer, you are born again, you have access to the Holy Spirit. Experience is not the best teacher. The Holy Ghost! It should give you insights. This is Winsight with Apostle Tokwe Aladimusi. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. Glory to God. A title is The Power of Humility. Uh, the Power of Humility. And you know, as we celebrate our children today, there is something about them that God wants us to learn. And if you are a child, make sure what you learned here today, you stay with you all through your life. Because this is very fundamental to everything we do, to our lifting. We've been discussing for some time the discipline of spiritual excellence. The discipline of spiritual excellence. And we say that there are some things that we do as believers. They look so simple. They look so mundane. But <laughs> they are very pivotal to our excellence and to our growth. And we look at physical our physical lives as well. Think about it. We talked about eating and drinking water. No matter how old you are, you do it every day. There is something about things that you do, disciplines like eating. You don't eat for one month, so you don't eat for the next one. You don't eat two months food now, so that you eat for the next two months. Every day you eat. You don't take oxygen now and say, let me breathe for one year, so that I will not breathe for the next one year. Every day you breathe. You don't say, let me brush my teeth today five times. So that I will not brush for the next five days. Every day, you got to brush. You don't tell your wife, I love you ten times today. So you won't tell her, I love you for the next ten weeks. <laughs> Just say it. So there are disciplines that helps us. We've talked about the power of worship. We've talked about how to study and meditate in Christ. We've talked about how to pray and fast correctly. And today we want, to look about, we want to look at the power of humility. And our text is from the book of 1 Peter 5.5. 5. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. The Bible says, in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of elders. And all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate with, to one another. For God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, it will lift you up in honor. Now the first thing you realize from that verse, verse 5, it says, in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of your elders and all of you, somebody say all of you. All of you. Not some of us. All of you dress yourselves in humility. How often do you wear your dress? How many of you do you dress yourself? Every day? Yes, or many times a day? So people have morning clothes, afternoon clothes, evening clothes, and they have the one for going to bed. Some of us in part of the world, we, is there any wear body face? Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't wear anything as it comes. You don't have the one for sleeping. So people sleep with their wedding gown. Hallelujah. He says, all of you must dress yourself. You know, dressing is something that is a discipline that we do every time. You know, I woke up one day and say, you know what, today, I want to go out just the same way I came. For naked, I came. <laughs> <laughs> and naked must I go out. You don't do that. You, 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 every day you dress. Now, when the Bible says you yourself, dress yourselves, uh, dressing is a daily thing. Every day you're going to wake up to put on humility. Every day you wake up, put on humility. But that's not all. He says, 
as true. Let it to one another. That's First Peter 5, 5. For God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. <laughs> if man oppose you, you can run to God. I have been opposed by men several times in my life. But the good thing is that I had a God to run to. But if God opposes you, who will you run to? You wrote to God back. I love that. <laughs> That's a very good resource. Run back to God. Who will you run to? You can't run to anyone. You cannot afford to put yourself in a position where you are in opposition with God. And many believers are in opposition by the state of their heart. Because they're not humble. It's a dangerous place to be. It says, for God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. Then he now says, humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. And at the right time, he will lift you up. You don't know. Mm, will you like God to lift you up? Yes, I've seen men lift people up. Mm, a man can lift you up, but not up to himself. Uh, I've been impressed whereby they were lifting you up. What is it? You are getting close to them. They smack your head, go back down. Who we'll sent you work? I've seen it in the corporate world whereby they, they, they are helping you. They say they like you, but we're growing. Don't just get close. Get close to them. The question will change. I've seen people promise they will lift you up and they will not show up when you need them most. But God says it will lift you up in honor. And you know that God is in that business of lifting people up. Because he doesn't have a rival. He can't be a rival. So he can live to the highest level. I don't know about you. I want to push on myself in the way that God will always be lifting me up. And he has told me that is the way of humility. I must know what humility is all about. Because if God lifts you up, nobody can bring you down. Except you. Nobody can bring you down. And God specializes in lifting people out from the lowliest of levels to the highest level. Look at what he did to David. A shepherd boy became a king. For Joseph, a prisoner became prime minister. For Paul, a murderer became an apostle. For Moses, a wanderer became a deliverer. In fact, in Numbers chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible says, Moses was very humble. More humble than any person on earth. People that God has been lifting in the past, they are humble people. They are humble people. Sometimes you see somebody, you say, I, I, I'm more brilliant than him. I'm more exposed than him. In fact, look how many people who are top, top today. If they check some of you, your head, the size of your head, the engine in your brain. Ferrari, not, not Vespa engine. Boom, 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 boom. Some people carry Vespa engine, but they are lifted up because they are humble. You carry Ferrari engine and you are going all over the place. <laughs> this humility is a serious thing. God can lift somebody. I say he was, nobody was as humble as him. If you check all through history, people that God lifts up are humble people. He lift them up. Therefore, if you want to position yourself for constant divine lifting, you have to be humble. No wonder James 4.10 says again what 1 Peter 5 C says. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. So, if this humility is what will make God to lift me, I need to know what it is. What is humility? How can I humble myself so that God will lift me up? First of all, let's discuss what humility is not. Humility is a word that is highly bastardized. Many people think it's timidity. We don't know what is happening. This country Everything is just going a wire. Timid, scared. You are going for an interview. You are being like someone that your the, the dog, the tail in between his legs. 
We are timid. We are not sure. Some people think it's inferiority. We are all flesh. Nobody knows what God will do. Nobody knows tomorrow. Skay, sera, sera. Whatever we be, we be. The future is not ours to see. We don't know. Some people think it's inferiority. Me, I'm just managing. We are just trying. God is helping us. And that God is helping us is a devilish way. You say it in a devilish way. You know, the way you can say God is helping us in a devilish way. You say some people will say, will you do that thing? You say, by the grace of God. And you know you will not do it. So you tell them that. You, you, you just say, by the grace of God. Me, by the grace of God. When in your mind is not grace you are relying on. In your mind it's like, I beg, this thing is beyond me. Sometimes this sense of inferiority to others, we think it's humility. In fact, the people that we think are your humble, especially in Nigeria, is people that, Ekpelesa, especially our Yoruba people, they'll be greeting and dancing and going down. You can be going down in your mind, you are going up. Yoruba people, I'm sorry, you know me, I'm a Christian. <laughs> it's not only Yoruba people, all tribes, but Yoruba people, their bodies by design. Humble positioning. <laughs> Morning, sir. Afternoon, sir. And your mind. You are a fool. <laughs> so it's not about positioning. Some people, the way they agree, ah, well, yes, sir. Bless you, sir. In the, in the church like this, we brethren. Bless you, sir. God bless you. And in your mind, you are like, this nonsense guy. He's so, he's not showing inferiority. Because, that's what, because I've seen it in the church. People, yeah, somebody I know was so proud. But everybody was saying he was humble. Why? Because when he kiss you, ah, like my leg. <laughs> As though it's, it's, it's subservient. It's condescending. You are above and below. Who am I to lift myself when God has not lifted me? It's not inferiority. It's not self-pity. We are just managing this life. Things are... We don't know how tomorrow will be. It's not self-pity. It's not stupidity. You've done, the, you've done the right thing. They say, who did it? You say you did the wrong thing. Okay, I did it. And you did not do it. It's not stupidity. Humility in Christianity is different. Christ Treasure Center, raising Christ-like leaders. The Lord will build His church and the gates of hell will not prevail. You are part of God's treasure and that is why we are inviting you to Christ Treasure Center, CTC, where Christ-like leaders are raised and equipped for all-round success, be it in the family, ministry, career, business or health. Join us at our centers in Lagos on the mainland and on the island for times of spiritual and oral insight in a wonderful atmosphere of love and sharing. Join us at City Lodge Hotel behind Petrol Confluence Station, Health Bus Stop at Lekki Phase 1 every Sunday by 8.30 a.m. for Fellowship Unusual. We also meet at Christ Treasure Center, CTC Place, 112 Commercial Avenue, Sabo, Yaba, by 10 a.m. every Sunday for a time of the word, of wonders, of worship. I tell you, you will experience God in a greater dimension. Our bus rides are available for you at our chapels every Sunday. So call us on 0700 Treasure or you can follow us on our social media handles at eChrist Treasure on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram to get our bus routes. Please come and experience God walking in and through His people in the supernatural. We are expecting you. And I want to talk about the Trinity of Humility. I've been talking about the Trinity concept of recent. I once heard Dr. David Dugwell talk about it. 
and it opened my mind. And since then, I've been doing some study. And really and truly, I see that I'm still doing studies that things exist in trinities. It's not only God that is God the Father, Son, and Spirit. God created things generally to be in trinity. For instance, man is spirit, soul, and body. Um, trees, they have roots, shoots, and fruits. Water is liquid, solid, and gas. Sin is lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Atom is protons, neutrons, and electrons. Should I continue? <laughs> Today we're not doing that study. I know that study entirely. The same way in humility, there's a trinity of humility. And we see that from the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians 2, 5. It says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as some to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God has elevated him to a place of highest honor and gave him a name that is above all names, that are the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Even Jesus Christ went through this route for elevation. For him to be exalted to the highest place of honor, he had to go through the route of humility. So now let's look at the trinity of humility from that verse. Look at Philippians 2.5. First of all, it says you must have the same attitude that Christ had. It's first an attitude. It's first a state of mind. Not just what you are shown on the outside. You can be doing, eh, like lesser money and be bowing your head, but in your heart you're not bowing anything. It's first of all a state of mind. You must have the same attitude that Christ had. It's a state of mind. What is your mind saying? What is the portion of your mind? Now, look at the verse 6. It says, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. That means we all know that Christ is God, but he left his higher estate and esteem and came down in the form of human. For the Son of God to become the Son of Man was humility. For the Son of God to become the Son of Man so that sons of men can become the sons of, sons of God, that was great humility. And he says that he did not think of equality with God. That means he was not seeing himself based on his position, his achievement or status, but based on his, his assignment, based on the will of God. And the next, the next part says, verse 7, instead he gave himself, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born in human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He humbled himself in obedience to God. There is no humility without obedience. The two work together. So, from that verse of scripture, the verses that we just read, what is the trinity of humility? Number one, see yourself the way God sees you. Number two, See others the way God sees them. And number three, see God the way God sees himself. And I'll say it again. Number one, see yourself the way God sees you. See others the way God sees them. And see God the way he sees himself. You must not esteem your opinion, your position, your achievement, or your importance more than God's opinion about your life. When you do that, you are a proud person. I think 1 Timothy 6.3 says it clearly. If you look at it from the KJV and the NIV, it says, if any man teach otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, verse 4 says, he is proud. When well, you don't consent to wholesome words, when you don't agree to God's position about your life, about someone else, about himself, 
then you are a proud person. Now, let's begin to break it down because I strongly believe that many believers are proud, but they don't even know. And that's why they're not getting lifting. Because he said, the equation will always be balanced. Once there is humility, there will be lifting. He says, humble yourself under the, under, the, under the power of the most high God. He will lift you up. Once there is no lifting, most likely there may be issues with humility. And the way I've defined humility now is not what you see in dictionary. If you go to dictionary, it's not the meaning of humble. It's not the meaning of humble in dictionary. I just gave you a biblical definition. And so, many people are proud. They don't even know they are proud. And they are in the church. And they are wondering why they are not being lifted. And I pray that today there will be deliverance. That people will drop pride from their mind. And you will see how easy it is for you to be lifted up. First one, see yourself the way God sees you. Don't be full of yourself. When you often brag about yourself, your accomplishments, you may be proud. Because God does not see you based on what you have. God sees you based on who you are. God is more particular about who you are becoming over what you are achieving. We are very particular about what you are achieving. I have this, others don't have this. What it is important you see yourself the way God sees you. You may be achieving a lot of things, but like Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, you should say, I am what I am by the grace of God. And not saying it because uh, if we say it, then we are humble. You have to mean it. It's an attitude. An attitude whereby you say, I am what I am by the grace of God. I was saying in Lekki Chapel this, uh, this morning, I've seen things spiral down for people within seconds. I've seen people who are very okay and suddenly health was lost. That you are okay and you can breathe. Is it not God? Or you think it's by your power? That you are healthy, that you can think. I've been in a situation whereby someone that is the head of the head of the old people that someone that posts everybody in the in the that particular office. You see that the time where everybody goes, the guessing lost his mind, he said behaving somehow. Initially, they were treating the person very nicely. After one month, two months, they had to go and consult the policy to say we are sorry. That your mind, you have mental alacrity, is God. That you go to the toilet and you remove whatever you, you just is yourself. You take away your. You can, is, there, is, is anybody that can take away their shorts and pants to wee wee? You're laughing. Do you, do you know some people have been helped for that? Do you know some people have been. They have a tube in their body that is needed to take uh, urine out. Do you know? That you just wake up in the morning, carry your chest, and you say, We are fine. We are doing well. You are not angry that money has not come very well. <laughs> you are still angry. You, you, you don't even appreciate that. You are who you are by the grace of God. Praise God. We believe you have been blessed by that message. And before we go today, we would like to ask you, if you are not 100% sure that if the world ends right now, you will be with God in heaven, this is your time to do so. That's why Jesus came. He came to pay the price for your sin because on your own, you cannot qualify for merit God's standards. You want to be a brand new person? Can you just say this after me? Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day, you rose again for my justification. Come into my life and make me a brand new person. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. You said that prayer, a brand new person you're born again just write us send us um, email using the details on the screen we look forward to hearing from you the lord will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail you are part of god's treasure and that is why we are inviting you to christ treasure center ctc where christ-like leaders are raised and equipped for all-round success, be it in the family, 
ministry, career, business, or health. Join us at our centers in Lagos, on the mainland, and on the island for times of spiritual and oral insights in a wonderful atmosphere of love and sharing. Join us at City Lodge Hotel and Petro Canfield Station, Health Buster at Lekki Phase 1 every Sunday by 8.30 a.m. for Fellowship Unusual. We also meet at Christ Treasure Center, CTC Place, 112 Commercial Avenue, Sabo, Yaba, by 10 a.m. every Sunday for a time of the word, of wonders, of worship. I tell you, you will experience God in a greater dimension. Our bus rides are available for you at our chapels every Sunday. So call us on 0700 Treasure or you can follow us on our social media handles at eChrist Treasure on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram to get our bus routes. Please come and experience God walking in and through His people in the supernatural. We are expecting you.